Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wigan Fan TV in what has been probably one of the quietest weeks to be a Wigan rugby fan. Nothing has happened whatsoever this week, and I don't know how we're possibly going to fill the time. Uh, joining me tonight from uh, an extended absence, I guess, is uh, is Gareth Davis, who, who's joining us from down south, and Matt McCauley, who's uh, there with his poem uh, behind him as well, so some things don't change. Gareth, first of all, are you well? Are you keeping busy? Yeah, yeah, really busy. Thanks. Um, obviously, it's the I own a guest house, so it's just going into the high season for me, and obviously with my sports journalism, uh, the weather has put pay to a lot of fixtures, meaning that you know it's just crazy scheduling for football and rugby down here at the moment. So yeah, lots, uh, lots to keep me occupied. <laughs> Um, and it's a very retro shirt that you've got on there as well. It's just yeah, amazing. I, so I, I, I don't know if I said before, I, I sort of collect shirts. So I, I was I was going to try and wear a different one each time. But this is like one of my first I ever bought. So it really doesn't fit me very well. If I could stand <laughs> up, you'd uh, probably see too much flesh. But yeah, it's a pretty no, rare one. Stand up, stand <laughs> up. <laughs> but my wife actually even asked what British coal was. So that gives you an indication of, wow. how, you know, how old, wow. it, how old it is. <laughs> uh, Matt, uh, I saw you last week. I saw you on Monday at the at the whole KR game, and um, yeah. you're enjoying your holidays at this moment in time. I assume you're keeping well. I'm very well, thank you. Loving the Easter period. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen anybody be so happy with Easter. The five minutes I was talking to you off screen, somebody that loves Easter a little, possibly a little bit too much. Now we've, we've got there's there's lots of new features on on our little uh, sort of. Um, software tonight. Matt and Gareth can't actually see what happens, so I can press buttons like this, and they haven't got a clue what's happening. It, basically, it's just making the screen very pretty, guys. That's all you need to know. Um, we'll get rid of that. We'll get the sponsors back on. And what should, I mean, what should we start with? Not not much is not much has happened really, has it? Should we should we talk about that person whose shirt is behind me? Should we should we talk about Sam Tompkins? Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to. Let me first of all. We're, this is probably going to dominate the uh, the show tonight. Uh, obviously, we we have got a game to to look forward to tomorrow night. But I want I want to perhaps ask you this, a question now, and we'll ask you the same question once we've discussed it and see whether your thoughts are the same. So, Gareth, we'll start with you. Do you see Sam Tompkins being a Wigan player in two thousand and nineteen, or do you see him being a Catalans player? I don't see him being at Wigan. Whether he joins Catalans or not, I'm not sure because. Do, do they? I, I saw a tweet yesterday that said, "How can they go after a marquee uh, Super League player?" And, and Sam is one of our marquee Super League players. Um, they could potentially be in the championship next year. Um, so, do they know something that we don't? However, what I would say is, there's no, ne there's no smoke without fire, and the fact that neither the club or the player himself has come out and said. Um, flattered by the interest, but I'm a Wigan player and I'll exercise the right for my fourth year of my contract. None of that has happened. So I don't think Sam will play. It would be a Wigan player next year, which would be a great shame because I really rate him. Um, will he be at Catalans? I, I, I really don't know. Like I say, do they know something we don't with in regard to next year's format? Is Super League going to go to 14 clubs, meaning their place is guaranteed? Like I say, really, this whole situation has created more questions than we've had answers so far. And I just think everything's up in the air. However, one thing I will say for certain is Sam won't be a, a Wigan player next year. Yeah, I mean, what what we'll do throughout the show is I'll disclose as much as I can. You know, I don't have any sort of fountain of secret knowledge. I have people that have told me various things and and, and sources, if you like, um, that that I trust, and and I'll show all the information that I have throughout the the show, uh, and, and we'll we'll ask you that question, Gareth, at the end, and and see whether you think he'll be at Catalans. Matt, um, your thoughts. Firstly, is Sam a Wigan player in two thousand nineteen? If not, is he a Catalans player? My my heart says a Wigan player. My head says probably a Catalan player. But but like you said, I mean, it does open up lots of much bigger questions about yeah. about where the the Super League is going in the next year or so. Because the, on on the face of it, would you choose to go to Catalan right now? Probably not. Probably not. But we we don't know what's around the corner. But yeah, I I, I don't know. I mean. I would like to get hold of Sam 
and just shake him and say, <laughs> look, what, what the hell are you thinking? Is that really that appealing? Four years under a warm sun with, with beautiful French <laughs> countryside, exquisite food, delicious wine, <laughs> golden Mediterranean beaches in a place where rugby league players are idolised. Does that really appeal when you can be in the moon underwater? What is wrong with the guy? <laughs> And, and that's one of the, I guess, one of the, the main bits to, the, to this jigsaw puzzle that we're, that we're going to try and put together tonight. So I'm, what I'm going to try and do is explain everything that I know or rumours that I'm aware of and piece it all together. And then we'll see where we come out at and see, and see if we come out in different places. But anybody that, that's watching, if you let us know what you think about Sam Tompkins possibly moving to Catalans, the more we talk about it, the more likely it does seem that he is going to to be elsewhere in 2019. Um, so th th this is the this this is the scenario as far as I'm concerned, and th and this is a lot of this may be news to Gareth and Matt. This might be the first time that I'm telling them, and but I don't think it's necessarily any new information. But we'll, we'll see. So a few weeks ago, I was told that uh, Josh Charlin was moving to Warrington. Uh, and the next day he moved to Warrington. I was told Sam Tompkins was moving to Catalans and I laughed at the person that told me. Uh, I was told Oliver Gildart was leaving the club and possibly going to St. Helens and I laughed at the guy, but that's not going to wear. I was told Ryan Sutton was going to Parramatta during this season. That's gone a bit quiet. Do you have any friends who give you good news? <laughs> have you got any good Honestly, news, mate? Th this person that keeps telling me things isn't a Wigan fan. I'll give you that. That, that is a clue. He isn't a Wigan fan. Um, and... Uh, the other one was that John Bateman is possibly will stay, but it is dependent on the other jigsaws in the puzzle. So put yourself in Sam Tompkins' position. You are on a marquee and put yourself in the club's position. I think that's really important when we're discussing this as well. So let, let's talk about Ian Lennigan and Chris Rodlinski first of all. Matt, if in, in your, your line of work, I know what you do is, isn't perhaps applicable to this, but it, it, you, you run a business and your top employee is turning up 57% of the time, but you're still paying him the most amount of money at the club. Do you keep them? You say, you say that's not applicable, but you, do you know what teaching is like at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't going to disclose that you were a teacher, but... I, I, I see it a slightly different way. If there's somebody who's working in my team who doesn't want to be there and wants to be elsewhere, what is the value of keeping them? And I, I think if somebody's heart is on, on moving out and going elsewhere, it is A, cruel, and B, not productive to, to try to enforce a contract and keep them where they are. So that's the way I look at it. Fr from the okay. club's point of view, there is a financial side. And I suppose there's no room for sentiment, really, when you're dealing with figures like that. And also, Wigan as a club is always going to be bigger than any one player. So that, that's the reality of the situation, I think. One uh, comment that came through before, which, which isn't on the screen at the moment, but it was an interesting point. And I think I screenshot it. I'll, try, I'll perhaps try and get it word for word in just a second. But somebody said Sam Tompkins, so 50, he, two, he's two and a third, roughly, years into his three year contract, Gareth. He's played 57% of those games. When he's played, I think I counted 57 games and he's got either 54 tries and assists. So it's a pretty good ratio when he actually does play. And I think we can all agree that he's, he's close to being back, back at his best. It's a different type of Sam Tompkins in 2012, 2011. We all appreciate that. He's had injuries. He's a more mature player. He doesn't have the pace. Um, but somebody said, for the last two years, Sam Tompkins owes the club. He, he owes them one more year. Does Sam Tompkins own or Wigan anything, Gareth, do you think? Oh, that's a difficult question. As Matt said, there's no room for sentiment, not, not even when you're talking a, a player that's held in the highest regard, like Sam is, that came through the, the, the junior ranks. Does Sam owe the club a, a, another year? No, I don't think so. I don't think he does. It, if you, 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 you quote them figures, they were down to injuries, Injuries he oh, yeah, sustained while he was while he was playing for Wigan. If he, he, you can't compare sport to any other line of work. It's not like he just said, "Oh, I can't be bothered to turn up today." He would have loved to have been out on that pitch. Loved to have been out on that pitch. I think the most frustrating point from my, from my point of view is what you said earlier. Is he's he's actually one of our. He, he spent 
sort of the last couple of years on the periphery, really, through injuries. But he's now a really, really important uh, piece in our jigsaw because his game's changed. And I think Wigan would be a poorer side without him. So I'd be disappointed if he left. But I don't think he owes Wigan another year. I don't think he would sit down and think, well, because I didn't play much because I was injured, I've got to sit. I've, I've got to, you know, extend that contract for the fourth year. I, I don't think he should. He should think like that. And I don't think he is thinking like that. Um, we've got to appreciate rugby's a short career, you know, and, and every player has his price. So like, like Matt said, from the club's point of view, it obviously shifts one of the highest, if not the highest wage earner off the books, which could free up, um, uh, you know, money to bring in other players. But Wigan have never stood in the way of players wanting to leave. They've never been that kind of club. You look back over the years, all the players that have moved on, Sam the first time he moved on, you know, you look back even further, players like when Andy Farrell left, Jason Robertson left, the club have never stood in the way of the uh, of players leaving. And I don't think they will this time, because like Matt said, if you have a player there that doesn't want to be there, that is so counterproductive and not good for the dressing room. So if he wants to go, I think he'll go, but I think it will be a shame. But to answer your first point, I don't think he owes the club anything. Got another meaningful silence. Yeah, I can hear you, Matt. Well, that's what we can chat. Yeah, we can chat. <laughs> Sure. To be honest, I've just been waiting to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> he he has frozen. I think what you said completely shocked him. To be honest, he he wasn't expecting that answer, was he? No, he wasn't. Do you, do, do you think he owes Wigan a, a fourth year? Come on, we can talk amongst ourselves no. now. We can, can't we? No, I, I I I don't think he does. I mean, contracts are made that. You know, everybody knows the situation. This is how it works. Cool. There we go. Sorry. Can you hear me? There we back go. Back in the Sean, right, you're back. There we go. You're, you're back. Sorry. I, I live in the North East. So we've just got the internet up here as well. <laughs> Colour television. I live in North Cornwall. We've got the internet down here. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's harder. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happens. I need to send the wife back out. Yeah, she's. Uh, I mean, I, that was strange. You you went really tinny for some reason. But uh, right, let's let's get back on track. The the other point to to make about this, and, and Matt touched on it, is Sam's point of view from this, and I think that's really important. I'm the same age as Sam Tompkins. I look a lot older than him, but I'm the same age. If I was a rugby player, and in my head, I am still a rugby player. If I was offered. And there, we don't know the figures, but the, the figures that are being rumoured are 250000 a year for four years. So if I was offered a million pounds for the next four years to go and live in the south of France, like Matt touched on, to leave Wigan and go and live in the south of France, a train journey away from Barcelona on the course with my young family, earning upwards of that. I mean, it's a no-brainer, isn't it, from his point of view? There, there, there is... How would you... And what, we've got the poll to, to come up in, in just a second, but Matt, how would you feel if it was Sam Tompkins that initiated this deal and wanted to leave the club rather than the club trying to free up the salary cap? No different. I don't no? think I'd feel any different at all. I think it's just... it. Uh, either way, whatever happens, I'm going to be upset. If yeah. anything, I'd, I'd probably be a bit more heartbroken if I thought the club were just trying to get shut of him. For the sake of some money, I think that would yeah. that would probably be that little bit more hurtful. Okay, Gareth, same for you. If, I could. If it was. I, I can't hear. I can't see Matt at the moment, unfortunately. So you'll have okay, to no relay worries. what so, what he said to what he said. Yeah, I mean, so what I'm, you know, it, it would your opinion of the situation change if it was Sam that was trying to initiate the move rather than the club trying to get rid of him? Because I think a lot of the narrative in the media so far is possibly guesswork, but sort of saying that we're going to try to get rid of Tompkins so that he can free up the salary cap because they need to keep on other players. I mean, um, the Gary Carter, the, the journalist in The Sun, speculated yesterday that 15 players of Wigan are out of contract at the end of the year. 
I, I don't know where those 15 players have come from. We, we added them up and we can get to about four or five. Willie Isard, Gildar, Sutton, those kinds of players. Can't get to 15. No. But would your opinion of the situation change if it was Tompkins saying, actually, that sounds like a good deal I want to leave with? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd blame him. Would you blame him? Like you said, if someone offered you a million no, pounds, absolutely. if someone offered you a million pounds for four years... You would say, oh, no, I, I, I can't do that. And, and like I said earlier, we're going to have never stood in the way of any player that's wanted to leave. We're, they're, we're just not that kind of club, to be honest. And I think one of the reasons they've never stood in the way of players is because they always know that because Wigan's a, a, a big sale, one of the biggest clubs in the world, that they'll always be able to get someone in to replace the player that's gone. I mean, history's always told us that, but... Would my opinion change? If No, I, I really don't think it would, to be honest. And I'd like to think that the club could understand if Sam sat down with them and said, look, I've been made an offer here that you can't match, that's yeah. going to secure me and my family for life. Um, you know, I'd really like to do it. I think the, the club would, would sh- shouldn't and wouldn't stand in his way. And like like Matt said earlier, if the club did stand in his way and said, no, you're not going, they've then got an unhappy player who doesn't want to be there. Is that productive for the dressing room going forward? Absolutely. You can't, absolutely, you can't imagine would be. absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, no, I don't think my opinion would, would change if, if it was Sam going and knocking on the door. Um, I, I think it's probably a little bit of both. His head's obviously been turned by something. The club have then looked at it and thought, well, actually, we can get him off the salary cap here if, uh, you know, and it could, you say about Bateman, you say about Sutton, they're not going to be getting paid as much money as Sam is. So it perhaps frees some money up to tie them to longer deals. Um, and and then perhaps there's some money there to bring another full back in. Um, it, if not it throwing any names, but obviously there's up. a pretty well-known full back who's sitting around doing nothing at the moment. Um, that could be available in a couple of years' time, maybe. I've got, um, I'm just, the reason why, if anybody's wondering why I keep look, sort of looking down, is because the comments on the screen aren't working, but I can, I've got my phone in front of me, so I want to try and get some of the comments from from, from people that are watching here. Um, you know, Paul Conroy says, with Bateman, Gildart and Sutton rumoured to be leaving, why would we allow Sam to go to Catalans without a bit of a fight? Hardacre, which is the only rumoured to be incoming, can't want that much of a salary. I think that's the case. And somebody's made the point that maybe only the 75, first 75 grand of uh, that Sam's salary actually counts on the salary cap. I think one thing to touch on here is the bit that um, Chris Radlinski made at the start of the season, saying it's almost a, a full-time job trying to manage the, the salary cap. It's, it's almost impossible because you've got so many different, you know, a homegrown player that's been at the club for so many years, you get a special di- dispensation. You bring somebody from Union, you get a dispensation. If somebody plays for England, you can get this. You know, it's, it's almost like a dark art trying to control the salary cap. And, and I wonder whether this has actually got anything to do with the salary cap or whether it is just a great opportunity for Sam to, to further his career, get a four-year contract and away he goes. I'm going to pull a few of the... the Go on, Matt. So it, it could be kind of opportunities both ways. I mean, a few weeks ago we were talking about, you know, it, was it the right thing to bring Sargentson back? And I think we agreed that there aren't that many centres around. If losing Sam means we can keep a centre like Gildart, which is easier than recruiting somebody else, then then maybe that's the way forward. Yeah, I mean that, that's one of the questions that we've put in the poll. So let, let me bring some of the some of the answers up from the poll. So we, we've had an unprecedented. <laughs> this is obviously a massive story at this moment in time. Unfortunately, it's it's for the I guess as a Wigan fan, it's an unfortunate story for us to to be talking about. Uh, I'm a massive fan of Sam Tompkins. I'd love him to stay, but my opinion is if he wants to go, let him go. You know, because I think I would in this situation. But let, let's get some of the some of the uh, poll questions that I put together. So we had eight over. 800 respondents to this poll. So I don't know whether that's a good indicator of the Wigan public, but I think it's a pretty good one for a little show like us to get 800 respondents. So, you know, this this is quite interesting. So the first question was, do you want Sam Tompkins to remain at Wigan in 2019? 
the answer was I feel like it should be on some kind of game show or Jeremy Kyle here. Yes. Um, Is it yes? yes. It's yes. It's 81% yes. So unsurprisingly, do you want Sam Tompkins to stay at Wigan 2019? Family Fortunes, that's what it is, isn't it? We should, we should play Family Fortunes. Uh, do you want Sam Tompkins to stay at Wigan 2019? Surprisingly, a lot of Wigan fans do. 81% of Wigan fans would like him. Now, the interesting one, and I think this is part of the obviously the key debate, is should Sam Tompkins be a marquee player at Wigan in 2019? Gareth, what do you think? Yeah, do you think majority think he should be or not? Uh, he's not a current England international, is he? So should he it's be? A great the way of looking at it. You know, I, I think you can work out that I'm a big fan of Sam, but he is obviously not considered good enough to play for England at the moment. Whereas players like Bateman and George Williams, though they didn't play much at the World Cup. But I'm going to say, Bateman, you know, Bateman played every single game for England at all. Did he play every single game? Virtually every single Possibly, game. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sean O'Loughlin, the England captain, is is Lockers a marquee player? Don't think he is. Is he? Is Williams and Just, Tompkins? W- w- Williams and you know. Tompkins are out too. So there you got, you've got the England captain that's not a marquee player. So on, based on that rationale, that you know you international honours would make you a marquee player. I don't think Sam should be a marquee player, but then his contract, how do you change his contract partway through it? His contract when he came back from the New Zealand Warriors would obviously have been, right, Sam, you are a marquee player. You can't just say to him after two or three years, right, I'll actually, because you're not playing for England anymore, you're not going to be a marquee player. I mean, like you said earlier, that's what makes managing the salary cap, like, you know, impossible. Absolutely. Like like Radlinski said, a, a, a full-time job, you know? So, should Sam Tompkins remain the marquee player in 2019? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> uh, no. 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 <laughs> Matt, yes or no? I'm going to go for no too, just because yes. there's no real sentiment. Interestingly, yes. 60% say yes, he should still be a marquee really? player. It's obviously close. I mean, 60%. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, is it? But it, it just shows that, the, that that is the debate there, isn't it? If we were having this question, you know, if this was a, a poll when we re-signed him from New Zealand Warriors, should he be the marquee player to get him back? It's going to be close to 100%. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. you know that, that's that's the unfortunate thing about the injuries, I guess. But next question was, and I, I'm re- I was really interested in doing this, and I, I don't know whether... This is perhaps right of me to do, but if Sam Tompkins leaves in 2019, do you consider him to be a Wigan legend, Matt? Would he be a Wigan legend if he left after this season? Would he be remembered me, in the same light? Okay, so you would remember him in the same light as Sean Edwards, Andy Farrell, Ellery Hanley? Yes, yes, yeah. damn right I would. Okay. It's Sam Tompkins we're talking about here. Gareth? No. There you go. One word um, answer. No. No, no, not done enough to be on. Not no, not won enough trophies. Not influenced enough games. Cannot put him in the same. Unfortunately, as much as a great rugby player, can't put him in the same breath as those that you mentioned. Hanley, a fire yeah. players like that. No, 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 no. And that, that's exactly sixty-five percent said no. He wouldn't be regarded as a Wigan legend if he left after that's the season. Oh, I got that one, I got that one right. <laughs> That that for me, you know, is, is somebody that grows up watching Wigan and Sam Tompkins grew up as a Warrington fan. I don't know whether that has any influence in, in maybe his decision, but <laughs> you know, you, you can, uh, you know, in terms of, I, th- I think it was Phil Wilkinson that I was talking to early in the week made this really good point about Wigan seems like such a, a, a fantastic prospect for these project signings. Ben Flower wanting to come here, Dan Sarge and Tony Club, but all the Wigan lads coming through want to move elsewhere. Like, why, you know, why is that? What 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 do they lose from that attraction? And, and what we see is the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Sam Tom is a completely different scenario. Obviously, money I think in the opportunity is is a lot larger than that. But I just thought I'd throw that in there to so go off on a tangent. Matt, if Sam Tompkins, I know the answer to this. If Sam Tompkins finishes his career at Wigan, is he a Wigan legend? Obviously, the answer from you is he's not going to stop being a Wigan legend from my <laughs> point of view if he stays for another couple of years. Yeah, look, I, I've got two kids. I've got two kids, and I ask them who they most want to watch in a game, and it's Sam Tompkins, because they've seen what he can do. He entertains them. He really does. And and for me, that's that's what makes him a legend. Okay, interesting. Gareth, uh, if Sam Tompkins stares at the club, 
retires at the club, hmm. do you then consider him a Wigan legend? Uh, depends what depends what the club win and how he performs. To be honest, whether you could class him in the same bracket as those players that you you said. I mean, legend legend is such a such a a, a word that's bandied maybe legend, about. Maybe legends, sport, you know, yeah, maybe legends a bad bad use of the word, but Hall of Famer, I think, is something that I use. Yeah, in, I mean, he, the, uh, he will article. be classed as one of the best fullbacks that we've ever had. Absolutely. Um, would you put him? I wouldn't class him as high as Chris Radlinski at the moment. That if you, if you want, yeah. you know that 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 you know. Yeah. You, you, and, and perhaps that's because. Sam didn't play in his successful side as someone like Radlinski or, you know, even someone like... When I first started watching Wigan, you know, someone like Steve Hampson, who was a, a brilliant player and a Great Britain international. Um, you almost think with Sam, perhaps he, if he'd have played in another team or another era, he would be, a, he would be considered a legend. Do you, do you get what yeah. I mean? Do you get what I mean by that? I, I just, I think that, that the fact that I've asked this question is remarkable. You know, I think... If in 2013, when Sam Tonkins left and we knew he was going to come back, and, and I asked this question then, would Sam Tonkins be regarded as a, as a Hall of Famer, as a legend? It was a no-brainer at that point, but the Absolutely. fact that we're even debating Absolutely. it now is, yeah. is perhaps... So can, can I get something clear? Are we saying that... If the rest of the team around him had been absolutely pants, Billy Boston would not be a Wigan legend? Um, <laughs> it's a good point. I, I, I see the point that you're making. Um, I mean, I, I, the thing is, for me, with Sam Tompkins, he's won trophies whilst he's been at Wigan. He was unfortunate in 2016 that he didn't play in the grand final lead up to that, but he's won trophies. I just wonder whether it's that act of leaving the club twice. You know, Andy Farrell left the club, Martin Fire left the club, Sean Edwards left the club, Ellery Hanley left the club. Players leave the club, as, as Gareth said, you know, I just think it's possibly the manner. And I, I, you know, personally, as I keep saying, if I was in Sam Tonkin's position, I would make the decision with that I think he's going to make and, you know, go to Catalans. But I just think from a fan's perspective, if you see this, as a player, oh, that's his beer gone. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think, you know, if you were to see Sam Tompkins from a general group of fans leave the club twice after a few years, particularly after being injured for a lot of the, the last two years, I think that could be a kick in the teeth for a lot of Wigan fans is, is how I would view it and, and why I think he's sort of teetering on the edge of potentially being a Hall of Famer and not. One, one of the last questions that I'll, I'll throw at you, and, and this was interesting, would you rather, Matt, keep Sam Tompkins and lose John Bateman and Oliver Gildart, or keep John Bateman and Oliver Gildart but lose Sam Tompkins? Well, this this brings me back to... Where's he got? Has he run away? Where is he? Yeah, no, I've, 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 I've taken him off screen. I mean, that's his wallpaper. If anybody wants to have a look at Gareth's wallpaper, I think he's made, made a mess with his screen. <laughs> no, he's, this he's brings me him. back to the whole point. <laughs> no, I had to turn the light on. <laughs> it's getting the light. He's back. The, no, it brings me back to the whole point of recruitment. Looking at it very practically... Is it easier to recruit another fullback, which, if rumours or anything to go by, we seem to be doing, or is it easier to recruit another centre to replace Gildart? And I suppose you've got to be entirely practical like that. I'd rather see Gildart stay if if the chances of us getting another centre is that slim. So you're just not going to answer the question? Is that what you say? D did I say that in so many words? Pretty much. Yeah. What, what was the question again? Would you rather keep Sam Tompkins but lose Bateman and Gildar? Answer that. I I did answer the question. I said it depends on on no, no, no. recruitment. Would, and whether yes it's or not? Easier. The, the poll didn't have options like this, Matt. Well, that, that is like a problem that. with the poll, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> two player. Oh God, I hate you. Um, I'd rather. I'd rather lose. No, I I don't know. But that that is my that is my exact point. That is the that is what the club has to do. You know, you, we're, yeah. we're, this is a hypothetical scenario that I'm putting at you. But it's so hard 
it's just impossible in a salary cap sport to actually get this right. And this is the problem with the, the marquee. Club, league. The club, they will have a better idea than than we do about how easy it is to recruit another fullback or how easy it is to recruit a, another <laughs> centre. And, yeah. you know, the, we, you can't take these things out of context. It's here and it's now and it's happening now. And they've got to look at what is going on right now and I suspect that losing Sam would probably be the most practical option. Yeah, OK. I'll allow you to have said that you answered the question there. Gareth, Thank keep you. Sam Tompkins and lose Bateman and Gildart or the other way around? Would you rather keep Bateman and Gildart and lose Tompkins? God, that's, that's a really difficult question. Um, yeah, but, exactly. Uh, this is exactly my point. You know, can I sit on the fence? <laughs> well, um, I mean... Can, can Chris Rodlinski and Ian Lennigan sit on the fence? That's, that's the, well, that's no, the point well, I'm trying to make. No, they, no, they can't really. They they have to make a decision. Um, I think if you look at, perhaps if you took Gildar out of the equation, perhaps if you looked at Bateman, is Bateman a more valuable player than Sam Tompkins at the moment? If you look at the fact that Bateman is an England international, then you'd probably say, yes, he is. No, I yeah. haven't answered your question. Um, but oh, it's, it's it's really I deliberately put that in the in the poll because I I, I, you know, I don't run the rugby club. But put yourself in the position of trying. Do, to do you know it. what? It's, it's one of them ones where you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If they kept exactly. Sam and lost the other two, then people would say, "Oh, you know, you've lost you've lost Gildar and you've lost Bateman, uh, current yeah. England international." If you kept Sa- if you kept Bateman and you kept Gildart, you'd say you've lost on his day probably one of the best fullbacks in the world. Although he's not reached that form at the moment. Obviously, as I keep saying, he's not an England international at the moment. But it really is a catch twenty two situation. If you had to, I had to put my neck on the block. I think I'd. I think the club's going to go with keeping Gildart and Bateman. I think the club will say, yeah. Sam, off your pot. We've had the best years out of you. Because I think the club have had the best years out of him, to be honest. Yeah, is, is that is that a fair point, or am I, you know? Well, sixty percent yeah. of sixty percent of the people agree with you. Sixty percent would rather keep Bateman and Gildart, but lose Tompkins. I mean, I'd, 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 think, rather, I'd rather keep all three. Of course, you'd rather keep all three, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. and, and I think, I'm sure the club would, but I just don't. I, I, it's not possible, you know. You you look at players like Gildart will still be on a lower wage than than a lot of first teamers in the Super League yeah. because he's still he's still a young player. And this is the the beauty of having such a good academy, but it's also the nightmare of having such a good academy. You've got to try and fit them all in and it's impossible. And I hope Chris Radlinski watches this and buys me a drink for making that point because I think that is exactly <laughs> the difficult position that they're in. You know, it, it's it's the, the by the way, the, the comments have just come through so we can start interacting a little bit, little bit more now and um, sort of putting some comments on. Um, yeah, Stuart has put, strangely, I've been disappointed with Bateman. Um, keep Bateman, definitely. Bateman is immense. Need to sign him. Can Sam take Joel with him? <laughs> <laughs> Sam is world-class on his day. Injury has hampered him. And this is the thing, you know, you put yourself, I think Lennigan and Radlinski have got to treat this as a business decision as well. You signed Sam Tompkins for his fourth season. The day that he signs that new contract on the first of May, the day after he gets injured and is out for the rest of the season, you know that that's a, that that could happen, and that exactly that it, it's a possibility. That happens with any player, and that's why when someone offers him could. a million, could. but that's why when someone offers him a million quid to go to France, he's going to take it, isn't he? Because yeah, you know, you know professional sport, you just never ever know what's around the corner. You really don't. So the summary is, I promise to sort of try and summarise this. And like we've been on for 35 minutes. I apologise for keeping you two on here for 35 minutes. We're not even mentioned that there's a game tomorrow. Um, so this the summary is, the rumour is Sam Tompkins has been approached by Catalans for a four-year deal, rumoured to be 250 grand a year. So a million pounds over four years. He's 29. It'll take him to 33, probably to the end of his contract. He's got a young family, potentially moving to the sunnier climbs of the south of France. Wigan have an option for his fourth year. So next year, they could basically, by the 30th of April this year, Wigan have to say, you're staying here. But that will be using up that second marquee status 
that Wigan have. So it'll be on the same terms, I would assume, the same wage, I would assume. Uh, and that means that George Williams and Sam Tompkins will be our marquee players in 2019. Add that into the equation that John Bateman has, hasn't has signed a new contract, still has the clause for the NRL. Does John Bateman have a big say in this? And I think with Sean O'Loughlin probably definitely retiring, definitely maybe retiring at the end of the year, Bateman played 13 on Monday. You know, is John Bateman your future marquee player, whether it be officially marquee or just on a much higher wage? Has the 13 on his back and potentially the new captain of Wigan? I think they're all pieces to the jigsaw. What, I, what we do can know... Can I just from, from add, this... we've not seen Navarrete play fullback yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you can add that. I think yeah, I think that that's important. And when I saw you on Monday, you were delighted that Navarrete had started the game, but very disappointed that he hadn't scored the first try. But I think that that, that that that's a summary. And and I think from discussions that we've had, you know, with various people, we know that Sam Tompkins has been out to Perpignan with his family over the past month. He went over there. We know that he's had a tour of Perpignan, potentially looked at houses. It's at a stage where it's not just a rumour and I think it's a stage that, in reality, I, I personally think it's going to happen and I don't blame him. But let me ask you the same question, Gareth. Do you think Sam Tompkins will be at Catalans in 2019 or Wigan? He won't be at Wigan, but I don't know if he'll be at Catalan. There you go. Okay. Matt? I think probably Catalan. Yeah, OK. I think he'll be at Catalan as well. Let, let's let's draw a line on that. Anybody that's got any comments on, on Sam Tompkins going to Catalan, basically we, we've got about 25 games if we're successful this year with Sam Tompkins still in the Wigan shirt. Let's make the most of it. Uh, let's enjoy the, the final games. I, I would assume that we, that we have uh, with Sam Tompkins in the team because he's been exceptional when he's played this year. And he, he's, you know, let's, uh, the one thing that I'm concerned about is that this turns into a Chris, Chris Ashton scenario. When Chris Ashton decided that he was going to go to rugby union halfway through the season, had the rest of the season to play and the fans turned against him. I can't see that happening with Sam Tompkins. I think he's got too much credit in the bank for that to happen. But that is my biggest concern at this moment in time for Sam Tompkins and sort of what legacy he leaves. Let's draw a line under that. Let's, there is actually a game tomorrow, guys. I don't know if you, if you know that. Yeah. Uh, who's it against? against <laughs> yeah. The team we've spent the last half hour talking about. Catalans versus Wigan. Welcome to the Catalans versus Wigan preview show. Uh, 40 minutes in. Let's do this very quickly, Gareth. Thoughts on, on Catalans versus Wigan? Catalans very poor so far. How do you see that game going on uh, tomorrow afternoon? Uh, routine Wigan win, even though Catalans have improved. I actually had a look at their squad list today. They, they're in a bit of a false position, I think. Any team that's got, uh, you know... Greg that, Bird. That squad is Greg, Greg, isn't it? Greg Bird. Mm. So this is a guy that's played uh, uh, Origin. He's played representative for Australia. Uh, you've got guys like David Mead, the Papua New Guinea fullback. Uh, Luke Walsh, who didn't set the world alight at Saints, but he, he's a very decent scrum half. Um, yeah, you look at their squad and they're in a bit of a false position. And actually at home, They've actually not been thumped at home, really, have they? they their away form has been dreadful, like it always is. That's but they've actually, is, yeah. they, they, haven't, they haven't been massively turned over at home. So I think they'll give the side a, a, a run for their money. But I think we're going to win by, we're going to win by 15 points. Okay, Matt, do you, I mean, it's always physical when, when we play in the south of France. They've got Greg Bird, as Gareth just said, who... Slightly physical player, and they have a certain Michael McAlora, who is, oh, God, I mean, you know, he, yeah. he, he, he likes a, I don't know, a fight, a big tackle, playing against his ex mates. I mean, he is the kind of kid in the park where if he's playing against his mates he's, and he's playing football, he's still putting two footy tackles in on people. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care that he's playing against his mates tomorrow, does he? How, how do you see the game going tomorrow, Matt? Um, I, I'm not counting any chickens. Put it that way. Uh, Catalan yeah. always lift their game against Wigan hugely. Wigan have got huge status d- down in that part of the world. Uh, you know, they love to beat Wigan more than almost any other team. 
I think perhaps because of, of the respect they have for Wigan. If, if you've ever been down there in a Wigan shirt on holiday, you know, you, you, you get mobbed on, <laughs> and people say, oh, actually, actually, Wigan. You know, they, they love Wigan and they love to beat Wigan. Um, and, and for that reason, I, I, I'm always a little bit nervous about it. Having said that, you look at the, the Wigan squad that they've put out and like um, like the crafty Cockney, I'd, I'd be happy to close my eyes and throw 17 darts at that squad. And whichever 17 players those darts land on, I'd, I'd be happy to see in the Wigan team. You know, so I, yeah. I'm confident, but a little bit wary. Yeah, I mean, I think the squad is, is incredible. We've obviously picked up a few injuries with Tom Davis and Joel Tompkins. Um, apparently picked up an injury from, from uh, Sean Wayne's press conference today. Uh, Liam Marshall scored four tries on Monday, did nothing wrong. Dan Sargison went well on Monday, didn't do anything wrong. Gabe Hamlin had probably one of the best debuts I've ever oh, seen yeah. from, from somebody. I mean, it was, just, it was just awesome. And I think Sean Wayne in his post-match uh, press conference with, with Radio Manchester got a lot of Wigan fans Slightly concerned by what he was saying, he's. he's I think the, <laughs> the comment, the comment went along the lines of, "Were you impressed with Gabe Hamlin and his leg drive?" Because every time, basically, Gareth, every I don't know if you've seen the highlights, but every time Gabe Hamlin goes into a tackle, it makes another five yards after the collision. Yeah, no, no, he, I, so I, I just, saw the highlights. He, yeah, he, he was just, and Sean Wayne says he needs to learn not to do that and to get to the floor quicker so that we can get a quicker play of the ball, which got uh, Wigan fans. Uh, in, in a tizzy, I would say. Um, well, Gabe Hamlin went really well. Your mate, Romain Navarrete, Matt, didn't do anything wrong. Would, would you keep Navarrete in the side tomorrow? Of course you would. Why am I even asking you? Yes, I would. <laughs> it, it's Navarrete. And I, I, I think he, he's going to look his game even more when he's playing in France, isn't he? That's where he's got his biggest point to prove. So you think Navarrete first try scorer then, naturally? Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, the day that Navarrete scores, Try is is the day that this show ends, and and I hope it will be going for a few more years. Yeah, um, let's 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 wrap up. I mean, there's so many things that we could talk about. The Easter period, Monday, I think was a very very strong performance from a very changed Wigan side in pretty rubbish conditions. Um, let, let's get actual score predictions then, Gareth. What what do you think the score will be? You've just said 15 points, I think. But what do yeah, you think the score will be? Yeah, I think it'd be. I go thirty twelve to Wigan. Thirty twelve to Wigan. I think the conditions have improved in, in the south of France as well. It looks very sunny over there at the minute, so hopefully it will be um, be a dry track for the the, the left edge of Wigan as uh, the, the the sort of the place where we keep scoring our tries on that left edge to really flourish in the south of France. Matt, your score prediction before we come to um, to the poem, which I am assuming this week is in French. It is, yeah. Um, Catalan 18, Wigan 27. Nice. And Romain Navarrete with the drop goal? With the drop goal on the first try. <laughs> I can't remember what I put as a prediction. I put Sam Tompkins' first try scorer because that kind of narrative <laughs> always seems to happen. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, just, it just has to happen, doesn't it? It's just like a narrative that no matter how many times you see it in rugby, football, you know, Sam Tompkins, red cards, Sam Tompkins try, Michael McAloran, red cards. Something like that will happen, I'm sure. Right? Sam, will kiss, like Sam will kiss the badge or something like that and it will be... <laughs> 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 the, the, press will have a, the press will have a field day. <laughs> oh, yeah, be, uh, do, you, do you remember the, uh, the photograph of John Bateman and Ryan Sutton in uh, Cronulla talking to the Cronulla Shane yeah. Flanagan? There's going oh, to be a in picture... The cafe, in the cafe, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's going to be a picture this weekend, isn't there, with uh, Sam Tompkins, Biret... Forget uh, <laughs> on the beach. Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to come out this week. Let's, uh, Gareth. First of all, uh, thank you so much for, for coming back on. No it's worries. nice to see you for a few weeks away. And uh, one thing that we do want to do um, over the next few months is certainly get you on, and we'll do a feature on on rugby down there, uh, in particular the the up and coming World Cup and yep, see season, what the season starts, season then, starts for us down here on the fourteenth of May. I think I think the Cornish Rebels are playing. Fourteenth, hoping to. Uh, be able to reveal something pretty soon, actually. 
Excellent. Good? Well, thank thank you very much for, for joining us. Stay where you are because, as we do every week, I build this up. Matt, uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. I'll be in touch with you during the week and I'll see you at Leeds next week. And yep. away you go with, uh, with our French lesson. Okay, b- before I do this, I just want to point out this actually rhymed before before I put it through Google Translate. Okay, so originally <laughs> it did rhyme. And I, I'll tell you what, if, if anybody can come up to me and, and give me the original version before it went through Google Translate, word perfect, I'll get them a pint in. Right, okay. so, so this okay. is it. Catalan poème de prédiction. Just you don't you don't uh, teach French. Can I just clear this? You do, you are not a French teacher at school. Trust me, I do not teach teach French. Okay, perfect. Carry on. Even with the current cutbacks, I wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> Le Dragon Sue McBanana, and I typed in McNamara. It came up McBanana on Google Translate. Very don't nice. understand that. <laughs> Le Dragon Sue McBanana. Besoin de tous les points qu'il pouvant reculer. Le flair gallique renommé n'a pas été là, mais contre Wigan, il essayant un peuple difficile. I mean, yeah, brilliant, I think. Uh, and <laughs> apologies for anybody that you have just offended. Um, Pretty much all of France, I think. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll leave we'll leave it there. Gareth, Matt, <laughs> thank you so much. Everybody that's watching Cheers. and joining you with the comments. Sorry that we couldn't get more comments on screen, but they just disappeared for a while. Um, like I say, I live in the northeast, so I can't help it. But thanks a lot, guys. No worries. Bye.